deeper and deeper. Look at it. Good morning. So today we are going to go to Giva Tin Mine. Um, I've woken up and it's a bit wet and miserable. So I thought, why not try and get away from this area? Um, travel further down into Cornwall, try and find some dry weather. Um, and if not, at least part of it is indoors. Right, we've arrived. It's really windy, so I don't know how much you can hear me out here. Um, this will be a good test to see whether I, my little wind fluffy is doing its job, but We've arrived, you can see the headgear and bits over there. So now I've just got to find my way in and then, yeah, we'll spend the entire day just sort of mooching around, videoing where we can and so on. I don't know whether they allow a video in the museum, but we'll have a little look and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll find out. Where are we? So, just to give you an idea, so we're at the car park, obviously here, we're just coming in. So you've got this little entrance here, which is there, which we can have a little look at. And then you've got Receptions, we've got mine shops. Uh, so there's all Mexico, so that's the bit that you go through. And then it looks like we can walk out to the actual mining area. There's a few more addicts there by the looks of it. Um, and then that looks all like the museum. I think this is where you get the guided tour through this bit. the torch on. You can have a look, you can see it doesn't doesn't go very far in there at all. Don't have to do anything around that corner there. Alright, I'm in. I've got a hard hat washer in it. So that goes for the entire site. But at the moment I'm just doing an inside bit. It's really cool this is a I suppose like a 3D map of all of the mines. Which is um Pretty crazy. So I don't know how much of Cornwall this covers and whether it's all of it or just this area. Try and look. You see it tells you down the floor. So here is Levant Mine, which we're gonna go down to today. So that must be, oh, this is all out into sea, look. We can give you a better view. So I don't know if you can see the lines on the floor over here. And this all runs out under the ocean. And it tells you even what they um, what they mined. So I'm booked onto a tour at one. So we've still got a little bit of time to look around. So we'll um, see what we can look at and then go from there. But here's the uh, main shaft. And then I think I'm just going to start right up the top. I guess that's going to be the best place to start, isn't it? So let's wander on up here together. Some big old tanks. Don't know what they were for, whether they'll have a no plaque, but right. This looks like the first bit then. starts in 10 minutes. You'll, um, you'll notice today that it won't be much of me talking. It'll be a lot of sort of b-roll and, and video and so on but um, it's been about my first time properly filming in what I would say is a public place so a bit nervous but we'll, um, we'll get some good b-roll for you, get some good photos and uh, we'll share all of that and then what I'll do is I'll try and video the tour as well and walking through the actual mine as much as I can alongside also taking pictures so yeah We'll see what we can get. Right, I've just come to the mill. No one here yet, but look at that. Very cool. So this is obviously where our tour is gonna to be. And how awesome is that? 
very cool. So the mill here was um, basically where all the magic happened. The first stage of it was crushing the rock down because when it was brought up from underground, it was brought up in pretty big pieces, about the size of a, a rugby ball. Um, the minerals were actually in the rock, um, so they had to separate it all out. The first crusher was in there, and that was crushing it down from big pieces into the size, about the size of, of your hand. Uh, then it would be taken through into a machine which was just in this empty space up here. Uh, and that was called the washing trommel. Um, and basically it was a, a big washing machine drum and it washed off all the, um, the, the mud and the dust and everything that was coating all the rock. There are quite a few steps in the mill as we go down through because it was built on a downward slope. Um, water was used in almost every stage of the process to feed it all down through. Um, all of it was pumped up from underground. They needed to pump it out to keep the mine dry and work down there, so they thought they might as well use it for something. Um, so it was all stored in a reservoir just outside here, and then gravity fed it all down through. The good pan slide the picking there, just here. Um, this is where all the rubbish was picked out by cats, so things like um, school, plastic schools from the bags in the wire. Gloves, bits of wood, any bits of um, scrap iron picked up with this electromagnet. And it was just thrown behind here into the, the, the bit and it was sold for scrap. You'd have, you know, crisp packets, cigarette, and all kinds of stuff in there. And the heavy medium packets, in this section here, um, as I say, again, not a lot of the And there is a photograph of it on the top of the board, but it's a bit of a um, but what it was doing was separating out the waste fabric from the mineral bearing stuff using chemicals. So it was a, a tank of water where everything was fed into chemicals turned into water to fit the taste. Um, about the consistency of water in the taste. But if you get it right, then the light gravel with little or no minerals in it would just float on the top. Um, they siphoned it off and sold it as building material. It's just waste, it's ideal for building rooms and things like that. Um, the heavier, denser mineral bearing stuff wouldn't would sink down through the fence. Um, then it would take it down through this pipe just for part of the year, down further crushing in the wall. That crushed that gravel down again for fine sand. And for every ton of rock, it works out at about 1% tip. Uh, it's about 1% tin, 1% other minerals, things like copper, iron. So the shaky tables, they were used for uh, separating out the sand from the mineral. So the sand would be fed through the pipe onto the top corner. The movement of the table and the flow of the water would separate it into three grains. Um, you'd have what were known as tailing, which was the waste of sand. And that was long, so it could just wash over the ridges to that far corner there, um, where it was just pumped into the nearest river and eventually out to sea. You'd have um, what were known as middlings, which were particles of sand that hadn't been ground down enough in the pool mill the first time. So the minerals would still be attached to them. Um, so they would make their way across all the middle of the tables, and they were taken down into two smaller pool mills. Re grade and then pass back down to the table again. The third grade, the important stuff, was uh, what was known as head, and that was the pure mineral. So they haven't been separated yet, so they're all mixed in together, but they were separating out from the waste sap. And they were too heavy to wash over the ridges, so they would get trapped behind them and make their way up underneath the shelf, this corner here where it was taken down into the next stage for um, separating out the chemicals. Oh, I've put some sand on and you can see it work. Obviously I won't put a ton on because we'll be a while. I've put a couple of scoops. So, 
I mean, already you can kind of see the separation happening before it meets the first grid. So the light stuff is the waste, that's washing over. The dark stuff at the back, that's the minerals, and they've already kind of separated out, really. Now, some of the dark stuff will make its way across the first few ridges, and that's the middle of um, And then one person will work, sort of work a block of about 20 tables. Um, so you can do those and all the way down as far as the wall down there. And you just sort of wander amongst them, just making sure that the water was flowing awry, holes weren't getting blocked up and stuff like that. But they do most of the work themselves, really. I mentioned back at the shaping table that the middling were passed down into two small of and this is where that happened. <laughs> passed back around to the bank of the tables behind there and reprocessed. Most of it would have to be done probably four or five times before it got to the, the finish stage. So, so quite an intensive process, really. Okay, let me go down the steps here. Uh, we're going down into probably, probably the oldest bit of the mill. Um, there's bits down here that date back to about the 1870s, and there's another mine working on the site here. And, uh, when we were opened, it just sort of built the new bit around the old. And in here is quite a rare survival from the Victorian mining period. Um, so this is uh, in here is what we call the Brunton calcite. It's what they used to basically separate out the sulphide before crop flotation was invented. Um, what they used to do is um, this what's in there is what's on the diagram, but it was like a rotating metal clay where they piled up the ore onto it, roasted it. Um, heated it up, they roasted off the arsenic. Um, so yeah, so they used to, what they do is they roast it off, the arsenic crystals, the refined stuff would be allowed to cool and kind of gather on the walls in there. It was somebody's job to go in, scrape it off, and the mine would bag it up and sell it. <laughs> it's... Okay, so, uh, um, what we'll do is, um, we'll hang out the doors here, um, see my colleagues who Steve is about, and, uh, the workings that you're going into, we think, date back to the mid to late 1700s. Well, like you probably can't see much. We're uh, in the mine now. Here you go. So you see, we're just going from this little timbered section, moving on now into a little cobble section, which is very, very cool. So I'll make sure I take some pictures and some video and show you that. Very cool. So yeah, so like I said, we don't know much about the actual history of it, unfortunately. Um, but we do know that in that time period it would have been done by hand with pickaxes, shovels, uh, candles for light. Um, boys as young as seven would have been working underground in those days. So unfortunately it was just one of those facts of life back then. Mm. You tended to do what your father did, your grandfather did. You never really questioned it. Um, and they, the, the Children were small, so they could get into the small spaces. So. Well, I've got the craft over here now. Just got up to our first bit of something interesting. I'll give you an idea of how tools this is in there too. Okay, so this is a shaft. So you can't see anything until we get back there. This is our first shaft. You can see it goes up as well. We've got a wooden cap above us. And then a winch bucket there. You can hear the water running. That's a lot of water to be running down it. Yeah, very cool. We're gonna go on that way in just a second. Um, generally, it would only be men and boys that worked underground in Cornwall because it was considered unlucky for women to go underground in those days. Um, so they tended to stay at surface and do basically do the job of the mill up there. Um, so it would have been breaking up the rocks with hammers, processing the ore, they wouldn't have got the same kind of quality tin that Giva was getting because they just didn't have the technology. Um, but they would be getting a good enough kind of grade from it to be able to make a profit on the mine when, when the prices were high. Uh, but you would have whole families employed on the mine site in that way. Um, you can see, you know, even, even the attic itself is all slanted. So it definitely makes it tricky to get through. I mean, here, I'm 
Well, you probably crack down, you probably can't really see me, but this is only maybe four and a half foot tall. Very, very, very oh, tight. I don't know if you stand up again here. Yeah. Right, we're in West Drive now. Um, now, the workings here, what they would do, uh, we think probably what happened initially was they saw the mineral loads outcropping on the side of a hill or a cliff like here, and they just tunnelled in and followed it along. Um, once they got in and started developing the mine a bit, they start sinking shafts for access and for winding the ore up. This would probably never have been pumped out. The deepest bit of this mine is about 300 feet, which is roughly sea level. Um, because back in those days, steam engines were relatively new, they were very expensive, coal was expensive. The nearest coal field to here was uh, Gloucestershire, which by road in those days, <laughs> it wasn't practical to transport it. Um, when the South Wales Welsh industry started taking off, a lot of the mines in Cornwall started shipping the copper ore to South Wales to be smelted and then the same boats would bring the coal back for the steam engines here. Um, but that was a little bit after this kind of time period so this would probably have just, just stayed relatively shallow workings and they wouldn't have bothered pumping it out. Right, okay we're back out on the cliff now. Um, it's really really breezy so I don't know how much you can hear. Um, we're just walking down. I'm gonna have a look at all these bits at the bottom, but that was, oh, I mean, that was wicked. I enjoyed that. I am. Um, <laughs> I just feel sorry there's a guy sat in there waiting for you. Um, and then as you get to the end, he just comes and like shuts the gates just to stop sort of any random person going in them and so on. Um, and I said, I felt a bit, I said I felt a bit bad. I was like, oh, I hope I'm not holding you up because I was just dawdling. I was taking forever to get through it, making sure that I'll, I lapped up every moment um, because, well, you know how much I enjoy that kind of stuff, but oh, that was a wicked experience. I wonder if there was anything here then, because there's a bit of timber in the floor there. So I wonder if there'd have been something here at some point. I think I'm just going to walk up to, I'm just going to walk up to these buildings that are up here and then um, I'll look back down. We know we have to look at that, don't we? Let's try and find the hool. The hool. Ooh, there's the hool. Uh, all right, I'm gonna try and find an easy way down where I'm not gonna break my camera and stuff. Oh, here you go, this will give you an idea of what it is. Oh, so this is the arsenic works that the guy was on about earlier. Um, Oh, it's actually blocked off. Oh, it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, you must have clumped my head on that. <laughs> That's why they give you hard hats, that is. That is why they give you hard hats. Uh, let's have a little look. There's got to be somewhere we can go from here. <whistles> what have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Oh, that's very cool. Okay, so this is cool. This gives us a slightly different perspective on things, if you can even hear me. Um, just coming down to this other bit here. Just try and get down it. Oh. Righty, so, I don't think there's anything much there. There's a concrete platform, but that's, that's it. But if we come over the other side, you can see, or I think you should be able to see, there is some, um, I'll try and get down this hill a little bit without falling down it. There is a, I don't know if you can see it, so you've got the waterfall over there and then you've got this pipe running out of the ground. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on the GoPro very well or not. You've got all that copper staining too. That looks awesome. We'll try and get some pictures of that and look at the waves as well.
honestly, I come to these places, I feel like a big kid. I've got to go to mine. I'm seeing cool stuff everywhere. Look at this. You've got the water running out the bottom. Look at the staining in that rock. Isn't that awesome? You've got raging waters down there as well. It's just perfect. This, this is why I come to Cornwall. What's getting me is there's a, there's a gate and stuff down there and a ladder. And I just think, are people really going down? No, no, crazy. You're not even going to think about it, terrifying. Right, move on. Just walking down this path, look at my shoe. Walking down it, it all just looks like nice normal grass. I just need to avoid that, right? And then the minute you step into here, it's a puddle and it just gets deeper and deeper. Look at it. Arr! Well, good job I wore my get mucky shoes, eh? And come to a door. So there's no way you can see around the edges. So you guys are gonna have to tell me what's in there. Oh, I'm putting you under the door. I'm on my way back up now. So just gotta wander up all of the uh, the piles. So all of this stuff here, this is all um, rock they've thrown away, I believe. It's all stuff that was mined out, went through all the tumblers, ground down really fine, didn't have any minerals in it, so they just bin it over the edge. Um, so you can see like huge mounds of it over here. Right, I'm back at the top now. It looks like they've got a uh, parts graveyard. So look at all this, you've obviously got like winching wire, all of the tube, and I imagine that was a pumping, pumping water at Giver, I imagine. Look at it all. It's a shame that it's obviously being sat here rotting, but you go look, you've got your old uh, your old trains, look at them. So obviously we saw one of these in the museum earlier in uh, better condition. But yeah, very very cool. I don't think that is the train, sorry, I think. The train, something else, and that gets pulled by the train. I'm not 100% sure, but the rest of it, I think, is just um, junk. It's all this kind of crap, so nothing much there. There is, I don't know if you can see it, there is a mill over here, which I've just taken some pictures of, but nothing too crazy. Just trying to see if there's anything, anything else outside before I go back to the museums that I don't want to miss. But yeah, Clark's graveyard is very cool. The fact that you can just wander around it and it's not sort of sealed off. You know, most places they'd be too concerned about health and safety, but I suppose they look at it and go, oh, as long as you can't bump your head, you're all right. So yeah, it's nice to be able to look around things at your own pace and so on. This is cool. It's all about Cornish engineering and history. A little wander around in here together. We're done. So I did uh, let's have a look. We're back at the map now. So what do we get to? 
I think we got to most of it. We did the compressor house first, followed by whatever this little section was here. And then obviously we went down, did the mill. So the mill took us all through these buildings. Came out the bottom, we did Wheel Mexico, which took us around, and brought us out the other side. And then we went down and we explored this section at the bottom. We didn't get all the way up to Levant Mine today. Um, and then I've walked back up, come back through, uh, where did we go? Horn my way around, up to Victory Shaft here. And then there's a little bit there. And then I went through the Hard Rock Museum where we just got like another little tour. Unfortunately, the dry had closed. And the last bit, bit I did was the Winder House. So the only thing we missed was the dry in the end. Um, and technically walking up to Levant as well. But oh yeah, I'll definitely be back as always. I'm always back in Cornwall. So maybe next time we'll, um, we'll merge, we'll do Levant and Botalic because they're um, they're quite a good walk walking over the the hilltop around the corner. There's a few adits and, and lots to see. You'll recognise Botalic straight away. It's the um, it's the two engine houses on the cliff. So whenever we whenever we do that, you'll definitely recognise it. But for now, I'm gonna get back to the car and then go and go and grab some dinner and then pack up and I'll be driving home tonight. <laughs> 